Okay, well, multiple pieces of legislation affecting California's LGBTQ community are making major steps forward. Just this past week, Governor Newsom launched a new process that would grant clemency for people who were ever arrested for having consensual gay sex. And a bill was proposed that would make STI testing sites a one-stop shop. Now joining me now is California State Senator Scott Weiner, who's also the chair of California's Legislative LGBTQ Caucus. Senator, thank you so much for joining us. Um, thank you. First, I, I want to start with this pardon. You were really a major force behind both of these legislations, but let's talk about the clemency initiative. I understand this started when Governor Newsom posthumously pardoned civil rights icon Bayard Rustin, who was arrested back in the 1950s, if people don't know, for having consensual sex with other men in Pasadena. Can you explain why this initiative was so important to you? Sure. <clears throat> well, we uh, joined together our LGBTQ caucus um, as well as our uh, Legislative Black Caucus to ask the governor uh, to pardon Bayard Rustin. He was a huge leader in the civil rights movement uh, and California really messed up his life by we, uh, in the DA or the police in Pasadena arrested him for having sex with other men. He was convicted and placed on the sex offender registry just for consensual sex. So we requested that the governor pardon him posthumously and we are thrilled that he did so. It sends a powerful message that California stands with our LGBTQ community and that we are committed to rectifying the injustices of the past. Yeah, and he, he passed back in 87, we know that, but as you see this photo here, he was a close confidant of Martin Luther King Jr. Um, what does this mean? And you touched on this a little bit for people, especially in the LGBTQ communities. Well, um, for many, many years, California uh, badly oppressed LGBTQ uh, people. Um, many, many, especially older gay men, continue to this day to be on the sex offender registry based only on consensual sex. They had sex in a park or in a car mm -hmm. uh, because California, like the rest of the country, completely oppressed uh, LGBTQ uh, people. So this sends a powerful message that we're serious about embracing our community. Uh, and the governor went beyond pardoning uh, Bayard Rustin, which is what we had requested, uh, and he is setting up a process for other LGBTQ people uh, to seek uh, a pardon uh, if, if this happened to them as well. And I am just so thrilled, and it gives hope to so many LGBTQ people. So I want to publicly thank the governor for doing this. Yeah, that is that is amazing. Um, I do want to move on to your other legislation that you are currently fighting for. Now, STIs, as we know, are on the rise in California. The state's Department of Health says rates are the highest they've been in 30 years. Senator, you introduced a bill with State Senator Gonzalez of Long Beach that would allow HIV testing sites to also perform rapid tests for syphilis. So right now you would have to see separate doctors. Is that correct? Um, well, um, so right now we have rapid testing technology. By rapid testing, it means you go in, uh, you have blood drawn uh, and the test is performed within 10 or 15 minutes. And before you leave, you know, um, are you positive or negative? And that means you don't have to go back. You don't have to, which for some people could mean uh, an hour's worth of travel. People forget to go back or they can't. Uh, we want people to know immediately, are you positive or negative? And then we treat you right then and there. Right now, HIV counselors uh, can perform those rapid tests for HIV and for hepatitis C, but we have a rapid test for syphilis and they're not allowed to perform that test. You have to separately go to a doctor uh, to get the test. Uh, and that just makes no sense. So this legislation provides that when you're going for your HIV rapid test and your hep C rapid test, you can also get the syphilis rapid test and get treated right then and there uh, if you are positive. Uh, and in the future, we hope to have rapid tests for gonorrhea and chlamydia. We don't have them currently, but the legislation provides that once we have those tests, automatically HIV counselors will be able to provide them. So it's a, this is a, a, a very, very positive step for public health. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. This really changes the game for our health. And, and I'm sure that is what's behind uh, your movement. But why was this sitting so close to something that you wanted to fight for? Um, well, you know, I mean, I, I represent a uh, community deeply impacted by HIV in particular, uh, and a community like many communities around California, uh, increasingly impacted by um, sexually transmitted infections. And 
uh, you know, syphilis, if it is not caught uh, and treated in a timely way, can have really bad health impacts on men, on women, particularly if, uh, for, on pregnant women. Uh, and we, uh, we, we need to take a very, very aggressive public health approach uh, where we make it easy for people to get tested, make it not a big deal to get tested. You just go regularly if you're sexually active. Uh, and then we treat you. We, we stigmatize sexual health uh, in this society. We make it something that you're supposed to be ashamed of or embarrassed about. And there's nothing to be embarrassed about. Human beings have sex, and sometimes STIs happen. Uh, and we just want to know about it and treat it uh, and just move forward. Yeah, we need to change the conversation. I was about to say this is something maybe we don't talk about enough because because there's a stigma that comes with it. How do we start to change this conversation so we are taking care of ourselves and our health? Well, uh, the news covering it like this, this is terrific, just talking about it publicly. I, I mean, I in 2014, I announced publicly that I am taking PrEP, which is a once a day pill that um, almost entirely eliminates risk of HIV infection. Uh, and at the time, some people advised me not to do it because it could be embarrassing to talk about my sexual health as an elected official. But I thought it was important just to talk about it and to be public about it as a leader in the community to say, hey, you should take a look at this as well. And so the more we can talk about it, whether it's parents having conversations with their children, whether it's having strong sex education, whether it's peer-to-peer -peer education, or whether it's having a strong system of community clinics that provide information, testing, and treatment, um, that will reduce the stigma and get people used to talking about it and, and normalize it because, again, uh, sex and sexuality are part of human existence and has been since the beginning of time. Uh, and we need to stop pretending that it's something to be embarrassed about. Especially when it comes back to our health. Well, thank you so much, Senator, for talking to us today. Uh, Senator Scott Weiner, thank you so much once again.